So welcome to today's lesson on the Kolosky algorithm. So I'm Widow Ken Randolph, third year students of mathematics KNUSD. And please do all to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos and please like the video if it helps you. So we've already solved a question on early decomposition using the Kolosky algorithm, but concern has been raised by most of you that um, you didn't really get the algorithm, how it works, even though you understood the procedure. So this video is dedicated to explaining the Kolesky algorithm itself, how it came about, how to use it, and a whole lot of things, right? And it is very detailed, so enjoy it as you get the understanding. So recall that we use a Kolesky method when our matrix E, that we want to factorize, is symmetric and positive definite. So we said a matrix is symmetric when the matrix is equal to eight transpose. So here meaning A I G is simply equal to A G I. So that means A two three will be the same as A three two. I hope you understand. All right. Then when you say it is positive definite, then when there is a non-zero vector S, then this condition holds. So S transpose A X is positive. So greater than zero. But there was a simple way to find out whether your matrix is positive definite or not. And we also went through that one. And you say with that one, a matrix A is positive definite if and only if each of its leading principal sub matrices has a positive determinant. So let's consider this our matrix A for instance. If this our matrix A is um, positive definite, then it means that the first the determinant of the first leading sub matrix, this should be positive so that means that our a1 here we've got the determinant of a11 should be positive then our a2 which is the second leading principal sub matrix is the determinant of a22 a23 a32 a33 and this should also be positive and the third one is the determinant of the matrix a itself so that should also be greater than zero positive so when these three condition holds, then we say the matrix A is positive definite, right? So recall that um, if it is 4 by 4, then that means you have to extend it and find the fourth leading principal sub matrix. I hope you get it. So let's assume this matrix A is symmetric and positive definite. So since these two condition holds, then that means we can factorize A. This is a product of a lower triangular matrix and an upper triangular matrix using the Kolesky method. I hope you understand the arguments you are making here. Right, that's fine. So let's move on. So recall from our previous video that we said if a matrix is symmetric and positive definite, then that means that it can be factorized into a product of its lower and upper triangular matrix using this relation here or this. So here I said some books use H and some books use L. So it could be any of them. So here, when we decide to use this, then this H is our lower triangular matrix, L. And this H transpose is our upper triangular matrix. All right. So this is our A, which we are seeing is symmetric and positive definite. You know that since our matrix A is symmetric, that means that E12 here is the same as E21, E13 is the same as E31, and E32 is the same as E23. I hope you understand. I said E, I, G is the same as E, G, I when a matrix is symmetric. Right. So this will be our lower triangular matrix. Now, there is a form of a lower triangular matrix. And this will be the transpose of this. So this will be our H. And this will be each transpose. So when you transpose this matrix, you get this. Right? So I hope you've done it. You got it right. Okay. That's excellent. Alright, so when we are done, then what we do is that we do this matrix matrix multiplication. So when you multiply these two matrices, we are going to end up with what we have here. Right? And I know by now, um, You've done matrices and matrix multiplication in your linear algebra course, so you should be able to do this. I'm just giving you some few seconds to go through and see what how we, we got this. 
So I hope you understand it. So matching modification. So you remember that it is um you do the whole of this row here by this column, this by this, this by this. Later we go to this by this, this by this. So it is just um row by column. I hope you get it. All right. So when you do this matrix matrix multiplication, we are going to end up with this. Then by equality of matrices, we can compare. So when you make comparison, then it means this here is equal to this. Whatever is here is equal to this. Whatever is here is equal to this. So on and so forth. But as you know here, we just have how many constants? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 6 constants that we want to find. Remember, it's the same thing here. We just have 6 things to find. So the Koleski is quite simple as compared to the do little and the crowd method. I hope you get it now. So when you make comparison by equality of matrices, then that means our E11 is equal to each each squared each one one squared. So you can see that from here. So E11 is equal to whatever is here. And trying to find each one one, that means our each one one will be equal to the square root of E11. I hope you can see that when you decide to make each one one the subject. So this is a method for finding for our each one one the formula. All right. Then when you come here, realize that our e12 is equal to each121 and each12 into here when you make each21 the subject, we get each21 will be equal to e12 over each11. Know that this can also be the same as e21 over each11. I hope you know why. Because the matrix A is symmetric, it implies that e12 is the same as e21. Then with the third one, when we come here, so E13 is equal to H11, H31. So that's what you have here. And when you make H31 the subject, we get H31 will be equal to E13 over H11. You should know this is also the same as E31 over H11 because our matrix is what? Symmetric. Then with the so right now we find for h11, h21, h31. So we need to find h22. So to find h22, we come here and we use whatever is here. Note that using this and this is the same as this and this, since the matrix is symmetric. So we come and find for h22. So h22 here is equal to whatever is here, right? So h22 is equal to this, but we are finding for h22. So that means you make h22 squared the subject here. We get h22 squared will be equal to e22 minus h21 squared. Then when you want to find you want to find e22, so that means you find the square root of both sides and you get this, right? So this becomes the formula for finding for your h22. Then in finding for our um, h32, we use this here. So let me go up, right? So we use this is equal to this, right? So um, that means we get a three two equal to this. But I want to make h three two the subject. So we make this here the subject, and we get this. Then we try to divide you by h two two, and we get this formula here for computing our h three two. I hope it's quite understood. Right then, for the last constant, note that we just have this constant that we have to find. With our last constant, it is this here is equal to whatever is here to find our h33. So that means that our h33 is this here. And we are finding for h33. When we make h33 squared the subject, we get this. When you find the square root of both sides, then we get our h33 to be this. So this is how we find our h. Right, but remember that um, our matrix A was a 3 by 3. So we had to find six constants. So with this method, it's a bit tedious, especially when you have a 4 by 4 matrix. That means you know your constants are going to increase and you're going to do a lot of computations. What if it is 5 by 5? Then eventually you have a lot of things to do. So mostly. Because this method is a bit tedious and time consuming, maybe when it is 3 by 3, it is simple, but when it's 4 by 4, 5 by 5, as the dimension of the matrix increases, realize that it becomes a bit complex. So 
we simplify things by using the Koleski algorithm. So that's just an algorithm that sometimes in exams is provided for you. And yours is to know how to go about things. So I learned this was the place that most of you had the difficulty. How to interpret this algorithm. So I'm going to help you with that. Okay. And this is very simple as compared to what you've done. As the dimension of the matrix increases. I hope you get it. All right. So with the Koleski algorithm, the first step sets just is set our H11 to be root of A11. So you can see that what we did here, you can see that there's it. All right. So that's what our first step says. Then our second step says that so for instance, let's consider um a 3 by 3 matrix, right? So that means our n, our dimension of the matrix is 3. So we want to use this and see whether we we'll get what, what we have there. So this one is very simple when the dimension of the matrix is even high. So it says for j equals 2 to n, set aji equals aji over h11. So here our n is 3. So when you try to expand this, listen, when you try to expand this, that means we we'll get for j starting from 2 to 3. So, when our j is 2, that means here we we'll get h21 will be equal to a21 because j is 2 over h11. When j is 3, we we'll get h31 will be equal to a31 over h11. So, this is the formula we're finding for h21 and h31. So, let's compare it to, note it carefully, take a look at it. Let's compare it to what we had here. So you see the same thing. I hope you can see that. So realize that with this, we don't have to do any matrix matrix and multiplication. We just get it, just knowing how to interpret our algorithm. Right? So so far, out of the six constants, just using the two steps, we've been able to find two of them. Then we go to the third step. So the third step says that for i equals 2 up to n minus 1, we see our n is. 3 so n minus 1 is what 2 so that means i just takes what 2 we set hii to be this so you see our i is 2 here so that means here to be h22 will be equal to you no know, the half here means square root so square root of a22 because i is 2 minus k starting from what 1 to what i minus 1 so i is 2 here so i minus 1 is 1, so that means k is just 1 to 1, so just 1. We get a to 2 minus h squared, I remember i is 2, so 2 and k is what? 1, so this. So this becomes the formula for finding for our h two two. So a to 2, h two two is root of a to 2 minus h square 2 1, like h two 1 squared. And so let's compare it to what we have here. So you can see the same thing, right? I know the problem is just how to interpret it, and you know, that's what you are doing. Right? Then the third step, which is the fourth step, which is embedded in the third step, says that for j equals i plus 1 to n. So you see, our i is starting from 2. So that means that i plus 1 is what? 3. So from 3 to n, n is also what? 3. So that means that our j is what? 3. So it says that. Set HGI so HGI will be H32 because J is I plus 1, which is 3, and I is 2 will be equal to so HG1 will be A32 minus. So here we are summing from K equals 1 to I minus 1, and I is 2, so I minus 2 minus 1 is what 1, so it will be HJK, but what is G3? So H31 then. H i is two, so two one, all over H i i. So it's supposed to be H. So all over H i i. So that means it to be H two two because i is what two. So this is formula for finding for our H three two. And let's compare it to what we have up there. So I hope you can see the same thing. The same thing. So you see the Koleski algorithm is very simple and very fast, very, very fast. And that one, whether I dimension is 10 or something, you can simply use that one to get all your values. Then the last step states that your LNN, I'm mean, supposed to do it H, because we are using H and not L. In some ways, you find L. So our HNN is giving us this formula here. 
So we know that our n is what 3. So that means that here our h3 3 is equal to e 3 3 minus. So we are summing from k equals what 1 to what n minus 1. n is 3. So n minus 1 is what 2. So that means k will take 1 and 2. So when k is 1, we are going to get so um h n is 3 so 3 1 squared then remember we have the sum here so plus when k is equal to 2 because k starts from 1 to n minus 1 n is 3 so 3 minus 1 is 2 so we have h 3 now k is 2 2 squared right always in the power half and this is simply h 3 3 because root of e 3 3 minus h um squared 3 1 then minus h 3 2 squared i hope you see that and let's compare it to the formula we had here so oh so sorry there was you see even this not help us to verify a mistake i made a mistake here when you make h 3 3 the subject this there is supposed to be a minus sign here you know I left that one out so this minus sign here and so this is minus h squared 3 2 so sorry for the mistake okay so it escaped me so you see this is one of the importance of the Koleski algorithm you don't make any mistake for instance imagine if you're doing a matrix matrix multiplication you could have made a mistake somewhere but with the Koleski it helps you and it is very very fast so this is a Koleski algorithm and how it works. Okay, so you can try to do it when your dimension is four, when you have a four by four matrix, which is symmetric and positive definite. So you can do it and see whether you can be able to do it or not. So thank you very much. I'm with you, Karen Randolph. And please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube.